You heard it here first. Bitcoin is going to zero. Zero. I want you to do something for me. Think of Bitcoin. You're probably picturing something like this. Or this. Or even this. But today I'm going to blow your mind and do something very different. I'm going to turn Bitcoin into a superhero. I'm going to analyze Bitcoin's strengths, weaknesses, and its superpowers. And at the end of this film, you're going to picture Bitcoin in a way that you never have before. Let's start with its size. In the cryptoverse, it doesn't get any bigger than Bitcoin. It's the daddy. We have a lot more to go with Bitcoin. It really goes in one direction, and that's up. Its market cap, what it's worth, is pretty damn big, over one trillion dollars. That's the annual GDP of Switzerland, no. bigger than some of the world's biggest companies like Facebook and Tesla. In April 2021, when Bitcoin was trading at $64,000, it was worth as much as all the silver in the world, and that in just under 13 years. And it dwarfs the other cryptos. Bitcoin accounts for 42% of the cryptocurrency market share. It towers over the second biggest, Ethereum, which has an 18% share. So if we're gonna turn Bitcoin into a superhero, it has to be big and powerful. No. Bigger than Captain America. Hulk, maybe? Nah, bigger. How about Zeus? Well, he's a Greek god, not a superhero. Zeus seems about right. What about maturity? The crypto world is seriously young. Bitcoin was the first, launched in 2009. Barack Obama became president. So technically, Bitcoin is just becoming a teenager. But in crypto years, it's the oldest, it's the OG of them all. This is a super fly in this month. So if you take a look at this crypto family tree, it all starts with Bitcoin, back in 2009. It wasn't until 2011 that its replica, Litecoin, was born. Doge, Ripple entered the scene in 2013, and since then, there's been a rush on the maternity ward. 12,000 crypto babies, and more are born every day. So I'm thinking that the Zeus figure is a pretty good call. Let's give him a bit of a wizened look. A beard maybe, a gray one, uh, maybe some wrinkles. Yeah, yeah, that's it. How about popularity? When it comes to the crypto world, being the cool kid is essential. Bitcoin's value is based on its revolutionary technology, but for mass adoption, you need a strong brand. I want this to be the biggest advertising campaign in the history of advertising. Bitcoin started out as a shadowy figure lurking largely out of sight. It was created by an anonymous figure who went by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. To this day, nobody knows who or what Nakamoto is. But what started out as a cyber experiment was to change the world. Bitcoin kicked off a digital revolution and its brand has swept the globe. It's by far the most popular crypto whichever way you look at it. It's not only the most traded crypto by volume outside of the stablecoin Tether, Absolute. it's by far the most Googled. On Twitter, Bitcoin related hashtags trend at twice the rate of any other crypto. And it has by far the most memes. Oh, I saw a lot of energy around it. It's funny, it's based on a meme. I So if we're looking at our Bitcoin superhero, we're gonna need some fresh drip. No cap, 
but let's add a cap. No the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, what about a bit more sway? Yeah, some shoes. Okay, there we go. Next up, volatility. When you think of volatility, think of some of your exes. Some were cool. You kind of knew what you were gonna get when they opened the door. Hi, Zach. Where you been? And then there were the more volatile ones. Yep, they come with a lot more risk. Cryptos are generally more volatile than traditional markets because the market is much smaller. Take gold. It's been trading for 5,000 years. The entire market's worth $11 trillion. Or US stocks, they're worth 93 trillion combined. They're the most traded of all markets. The markets go up and down for sure, but not like Bitcoin. As a newcomer, it's more volatile. And there's a reason for this. If the crypto markets were a body of water, it would be a swimming pool. Jump into it and you create waves throughout the pool. Gold is a much bigger market, more like a lake. Jump into the middle of a lake, you'll create some ripples, but they aren't gonna hit the shore. And then you have the US stock market. It's like an ocean. Jump into it and nobody's gonna know about it. Bitcoin started out life as a puddle. In November 2013, it experienced its first bull run, peaking at $1,150. Within a month, it crashed to $520, wiping out over half of its value. In January 2021, Bitcoin dropped from $40,000 to $30,000, losing 29% of its value before reaching an all-time high of 64,000 in April this year. And while this appears highly volatile as a percentage of the market, these ripples are in fact far smaller. I mean, you don't go from zero to a trillion dollar asset without a few bumps along the way. Other cryptos follow the same patterns as big boy Bitcoin. But as Bitcoin's market is the biggest and it has a deeper pool of longer term investors, it's less volatile as a percentage share than other cryptos like ETH or Doge. Remember, it's all about perspective. But here's something to keep in mind. So-called whales, those who own the disproportionately large sums of Bitcoin, have the ability to disrupt the market by selling up. Bitcoin is volatile. But with time and adoption, it will stabilize. It's leg day, baby. Let's pump up them quads, firmer them calves. Let's go. We're getting there. And what about energy use? I think Bitcoin has a PR problem. Okay. A sustainability, Greta in 2020, not green problem. And while many of these headline grabbing claims are, let's say, dubious, there's no getting away from the fact that Bitcoin does use a lot of energy. This is because of the way it's been engineered. There's a huge motivation, if you're a Bitcoin miner, to burn an awful lot of electricity. And that's the problem. If someone wants to make a Bitcoin transaction, everyone on a network is alerted. This is where so-called miners come in. The first miner to solve a complex mathematical puzzle is able to verify the transactions and bundle them into what is known as a block. A new block is created every 10 minutes. For their efforts, the miner is rewarded with six and a quarter Bitcoins. At today's price, that's worth around $270,000. This is why Bitcoin mining has become a big business. But this process is hugely energy intensive. And Bitcoin is the most energy hungry of them all. It consumes 68% of the energy used in the leading mineable cryptocurrencies. That's around 104 terawatts of energy a year. This may seem staggering, but let's put this into perspective. The financial sector consumes 48 times more energy than Bitcoin. And the gold mining sector guzzles three times more than Bitcoin. And of the energy that Bitcoin consumes, 56% is already from renewable sources, which is way ahead of any country. Even so, Bitcoin's Achilles heel is the perception of its energy use. If Bitcoin drove a car, 
it would be a diesel guzzling Hummer. So let's add some fumes coming out of its ears. Yeah, that's cool. All that energy use I've just told you about, well, it's turned Bitcoin into the Fort Knox of the crypto world. But it isn't protected by steel doors. It's protected by maps and layers of energy. And it's never been hacked. Nobody will ever know how many people have tried to attack or hack the Bitcoin network. The only thing we do know is that they've never been successful. If a hacker wanted to break into the network to steal Bitcoin, the most likely method would be what's known as double spending. This is where a hacker attempts to spend a cryptocurrency more than once, effectively claiming a valid transaction when in reality, they've actually diverted the funds into their own wallet. To get away with it, the transaction would have to be validated by the entire network. As soon as others smell a rat, the double spender would be ejected from the network. But even if hackers wanted to do this, it would be a pointless exercise because it would take a huge amount of computing power and cost to try to beat the system. So it would result in a net loss. When you hear headlines like these, that is the people who just lost over $600 million of crypto. This isn't a result of the Bitcoin network being hacked, it's external hacks. When exchanges or private wallet passwords or keys are stolen and with it, the access to the Bitcoin. Many other cryptos, including Ethereum, have been hacked. So Bitcoin really is rock solid. This is a real superhero quality. So let's give this dude some protection. How about a big shield? Captain America style? Nothing's getting through this guy. This all sounds good, but what about its weakness, I hear you say? Any revolutionary and disruptive technology comes with inherent risks. Though the Bitcoin network may be secure, its growth could be stifled by governments. All cryptocurrency related transactions are illegal. In September 2021, China officially banned any form of crypto activity, effectively banning itself from the network. India's government proposed sanctions in March of this year. Colombian financial institutions are forbidden to facilitate Bitcoin transactions. And in America, there may be no plans to ban Bitcoin, but if it was up to people like this? Look, the, the main problem with Bitcoin, it doesn't even matter how many there are, if they're not worth anything. Well, it's probably rat poison squared. Bitcoin could well become heavily regulated, so much so that growth is stunted. So if that's a downer, here's the cool stuff. Special powers. Bitcoin is precious. There's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. Right now, there's almost 19 million Bitcoin in circulation. And so technically, there's only 2 million Bitcoin left to be mined. What? There are 8 billion people on the planet and only 21 million Bitcoins up for grabs. That makes it a scarce asset. But for those wanting to buy in, the good news is that each Bitcoin is broken up into 100 million pieces, known as sats or satoshis. That means that for $1, you can currently buy 2,300 sats. And that's owned by you, not a bank or government. It's borderless and resistant to all or any censorship. And this is where Bitcoin is all powerful. Every other form of money, and every other crypto in existence is controlled by somebody or some company, not Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto may be the mythical figure behind it, but it's truly decentralized. The technology runs itself. Everyone who invests forms the digital network, yet nobody has control over it. It's kind of a mind-blowing concept. I like to compare it to the sun. Everybody in the world kind of depends on it, but nobody can control or touch it. So let's give this superhero some kind of omnipotence. Let's give him some sun rays. Oh, maybe that's too much, kind of like a messiah. Uh, what about some laser eyes? Yeah, that's cool. And there you have it. If Bitcoin was a superhero, it would look like this. It's big, and while it may be an energy guzzler, it's a truly radical and revolutionary concept that has transformed the way we think of money.
we're going to be turning other cryptos into superheroes. So if you want to see more of this series, make sure you click the subscribe button below and we'll let you know when they land. Or you can read the latest crypto news by clicking on our website below.